the evil one, because the Lord is with us. We are clothed in his armor, and in it we all glory. May he who carried the cross on his shoulder from Zion, sprinkle his dew of mercy upon the bones of the dead. O Lord, may the departed who confess the Trinity be received in your kingdom as you promised to the thief. Glory to Jesus who was crucified on Golgotha. He cried out and rocks were rent. The dead arose and sang praise. But more praise the servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. May the Lord's name be blessed forever and ever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, great is the name of the Lord. The Lord is high above all people, and his glory is above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who sits on high and looks upon the depths in heaven and on earth? He raises the water from the dead hell and makes him sit with the princes of the people. He makes the barren woman keep house and be a joy from all our children. And give to the praise of God, Lord and Lord. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And to the ages of ages and forevermore. Barak more, it is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, Most High. To proclaim your grace in the morning and your faithfulness in the night. Lord, in the morning you shall hear my voice, and in the morning I have prepared myself to appear before you. Lord, have compassion on your people. Lord, pardon and forgive the sins of all of us. Holy One, let your right hand rest upon us, and impart in our infirmity, because let your name is forever. Amen. Holy are you, O God. Holy are you, Almighty. Holy are you, Mortal. Crucified for us, have mercy upon us. Holy are you, O God. Holy are you, Almighty. Holy are you, Mortal. Crucified for us, have mercy upon us. Holy are you, O God. Holy are you, Almighty. Holy are you, Mortal. Crucified for us, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, be kind and have mercy. Lord, accept our service and our prayers. Have mercy upon us. Glory be to you, O God. Glory be to your Creator. Glory be to your Christ, the King, with compassion. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts and sins, as we also forgive our debtors. Let us not the temptation, but deliver us in the old. For thy name is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We believe in one true God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. And in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God of the Father before all worlds, light of light, true God, true God, the God of our made, being the one essence of the Father, and by whom all things are made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was the crown of the Holy Spirit, and of the Holy Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the King, Amen, and was crucified for us in the days of Pontius Pilate, and suffered at hand of his glory, and in the third day rose again in the of Jesus, and ascended into heaven, and sat on the right hand of his Father, and shall come again in his great glory, to judge both the living and the dead, who is the kingdom of the Father and all men. And to the one that he was the Spirit, the light and the Lord of all, who proceeds from the Father, and who the Lord of the Father and the Son, is born to the special glory of the Lord, who is born to the prophets and the apostles, and to the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And we confess what baptism for the remission of sins, and the Father is the rest of the dead, and the new life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. 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 Lord, be kind and have mercy. And so, Lord, have mercy. Glory be to you, O Lord. Glory be to you, O Lord. Glory be to you, O Father, and God is born. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and 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 Good morning to you all once again, and uh, I hope, uh, like uh, all of us, every one of you is enjoy had enjoyed uh, last night's uh, events. Uh, we look forward to another eventful day today, and uh, let us uh, pray uh, that uh, God will allow us to make full use of today, so that uh, we can um, grow in our fellowship with one another. With one another. Uh, meet each other 
uh, get to know each other, um, develop friendships, and uh, um, uh, keep in mind uh, we are here uh, to uh, glorify our Lord uh, first and then for all the other good activities that are, that are being organized. Um, with that said, I will um, um, uh, let our deacons, um, all, almost all of you know uh, Deacon uh, Jake, Deacon Rahul, and Deacon Sudan. Um, uh, we'll start with Deacon Sudan. Uh, Deacon Sudan is from um, Edmonton, Canada. Uh, everybody knows that Edmonton is right? Western Canada. Yeah, Western Canada. Yeah. So, um, 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 so that's Deacon Sudan and uh, Deacon uh, Rahul. Uh, Rahul Thoma is from um, Hartford. Uh, who has not seen uh, Deacon Rahul before? Okay, most all of you have seen him. And you have Deacon Jake here. Um, from, uh, he's been in New York area for the last uh, six years. And originally from um, Chicago. And he'd be with us for a few more weeks and then he might leave for a year to be in uh, Damascus. Um, so they will uh, get into the uh, uh, program for the rest of the day. And this is our beloved Anubachan from uh, Boston Church. So thank you guys for the introductions. Okay. So we're just going to, uh, we're doing it a little informal right now and then we're going to do a small presentation. And after that, um, we're gonna, uh, I'm going to ask you guys a question at the beginning and then you guys can talk amongst yourselves and then just uh, ask feedback. And then after that, we'll go through a small presentation about uh, our identity. So talking about what does it mean to be a Christian, what does it mean to be Syrian Orthodox, and what does it mean to be Nanaya. And then after that, uh, we'll have uh, pass out note cards. And if you have any questions, we'll just, uh, we'll do that. Uh, so much can you pass out the note cards and pass. And then uh, if you guys have, if, well, write down a question that you guys have. We'll try to answer any questions that we have uh, for the time remaining after the presentation. And it can be regarding the presentation or anything that you have on your heart. Uh, and we'll try to get some to some today. Uh, if not, we're having it tomorrow. Again, we're going to have uh, tomorrow, uh, that's the main session with the uh, president of St. Vladimir's Orthodox Theological Seminary, Father Chad. Uh, he's our, uh, like one of our spiritual fathers in seminary. So he'll be giving the talk tomorrow on a great topic for all of us, dating, marriage, and family life um, in the Orthodox Church, uh, in, our, in our faith. Um, so please uh, please uh, be, be on time for that. And uh, please tell your friends uh, who, are not, who are not able to be here to be there for that because we want, since the guest speaker is coming, we want uh, this room to be filled. Um, but nonetheless, I thank you all for coming. I know it's not easy. Uh, to wake up in the morning, especially after a long night of uh, enjoyment, talking to everyone, meeting new people. But thank you for all being here. Um, right now, we're just going to introduce ourselves. I'm just going to give Rahul Tumajan the time to just introduce who he is. Um, uh, Rahul Tumajan is our uh, one of our, our newest Tumajan in, uh, in our uh, in our uh, in our and, uh, community here in North America. So um, I'll just uh, let him share about his life and uh, quickly, and then. I'll share about me, and then we'll start the presentation. I'll give you guys a short story. Others will be here for a while. Um, my name is Rahul Thomas. Um, from those that don't know, I'm from Hartford, Connecticut, St. Mary's County Church. Um, I, I was born there. I grew up there. High school, college, everything. Um, I majored in, my bachelor's was in MIS, Management Information Systems. So I would say my journey towards here started maybe sometime in college or high school, I don't really know when, but I was always drawn to the church and serving in the church. So I was always serving in the church. I was an altar server since I was really, really young. So at some point, he got to the point where I was like, what more can I do? How else can I serve? I even during college and stuff, people would be like, oh, you should become a Tamajan and get ordained and stuff like that. And I would just dismiss it and be like, okay, maybe. But I didn't see that as my path right then. And then, you know, once I finished college and I was working, and then um, I knew it was time for the next step. And for me, because uh, Jay Tamajan was already in seminary, um, it was the, in 2018, it was the right time, everything seemed to line up um, for me to go to seminary. Because uh, for me to do more, I felt like 
I should go to seminary and get the training um, instead of just keep doing what I'm doing so I can. Um, I guess it was my calling was to give spiritually what I didn't get growing up. Um, we've had a great community in America and Harvard and everything with our priests and our uh, church members and everything, but there's always something missing because in the last what are years we've been here, it's, we've been focused on building the churches and getting our roots set, but not that our roots set, it was um, time to grow spiritually. So I wanted to go to seminary to help myself and also help everybody else to grow spiritually. So then in, uh, in July 2018, I gave my two-week two notice at my job, and then that fall I started my first semester of seminary um, at St. Vladimir's. I was there for three years doing a uh, Master of Divinity. And then after that, after I graduated, um, it, but those three years flew by real quick. So then after I graduated, I was ordained and became a chamach. And so I was on the late path to being ordained. And I don't regret it at all. I think it was everything lined up the way it should have. So that's the short version of my story. Uh, he was in my, not Rahul Martin specifically, but uh, I was praying for another uh, American uh, young person, and I'm still praying for more young people to uh, have a desire to uh, to actually serve in the church, and uh, that can be men and women. And uh, I still pray for that, that more of our young people have that desire to use the talents and skills that God has given them to glorifying God, whether that be going for more training in seminary and learning and being able to serve as a, in a teaching capacity or in whatever God's, uh, the skills that God has given you, a beautiful voice, uh, sacred art, and uh, you're talented in art, so many different things that, uh, in leadership in the church, so many different things that, uh, so we continue to pray for more and more people, not only like Ramos Mountain, but men and women, uh, lay people and ordained uh, for the ministry. So for, for me, I was uh, born and raised in Chicago. And uh, I, I actually uh, joined the altar at 10. And then, like Ronald so much, I was drawn to the altar, drawn to the church. Uh, and uh, have not, not uh, knowing really uh, what to do next, I kind of I prayed a lot. And I felt that, uh, that I, it, was, I, I was, it was time for me to, uh, to grow closer to the Lord. And so I did. I was growing closer to the Lord. And I felt the call to ministry, to serve. And so I talked with my priest, um, who, who guided me through that long journey, and, uh, and then he spoke to me. And then I was ordained a, a chamachan at, like, at the age of 15, but I was just a koroi, a reader, and, um, and then. So at that time, I didn't really know what I was doing, uh, but I had that faith that, uh, that uh, I, you know, I was a chamachan now, I was a reader, and like, uh, I felt uh, blessed to be in this position, and so I uh, learned, I, I helped my the church helped me to grow in Chicago, helped me to grow spiritually and also in my leadership skills. And uh, and then uh, during college time, uh, I really wanted to go to a Christian college. I was afraid, not that public schools and uh, it's 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 not bad, but I, I felt uh, that I wanted to just go in a, a, a good Christian community uh, so that I can grow more. Uh, and I felt at that time that it would have, I would have felt uh, too alone if I was in a public university. So I went to a private Christian school uh, where I studied biology and bioethics. And uh, actually, uh, during that time, I really wanted to go to med school so that uh, I was wrestling between med school and ministry. And so like I applied, I did the MCAT and everything. And, uh, and then after uh, getting in, I was like, uh, I was struggling really. Like, should I go to, uh, I don't feel called to do, to do this. So I prayed and I felt uh, seminary was the call for me. So you know, I my parents weren't too happy about it. But uh, uh, when I when I when I told them, it was hard because uh, we never had any Kanaya Chamachans in America, uh, American Kanaya Chamachans uh, going to seminary. So it was very difficult for them to accept because I was the first one. Uh, but uh, God's grace was with them, and I had that faith, and so I went. And uh, it was an amazing, uh, life changing time for me to be formed, uh, to learn the, the faith, to learn um, 
so much in four years of, of seminary. In, in, so I moved from Chicago to New York. Uh, and uh, during that time, I, uh, I felt the, you know, the call uh, to celibacy, to, to not get married. So I struggled with that too, and uh, you know, talked to a few girls, trying to uh, see. Uh, but after, uh, after discerning and praying about it, I felt this was not my call to marriage. So I discerned celibacy. Uh, so after working for two years as a hospice chaplain, after seminary and serving the churches, uh, I felt the call to go to uh, to join a monastery. So I'll be joining a monastery next month in, uh, in an hour from Damascus in Syria, uh, where I'll be discerning the monastic life. And uh, you know, if that is my call, then I'll be tonsured a monk. And uh, God willing, you know, if uh, I'll be there uh, in, in Syria for some time, and whenever the patriarch makes a monastery in America, then I can come back. And then the monastery will be, you know, open open to the public on the weekends for people to come and to see the monastery, to see the monastic life, uh, you know. And mo monasteries, there's guest houses where people can do retreat, vacation, just silence the busyness of the world, to just pray, not have technology, uh, learn, uh, listen to the monks, and uh, have a peaceful, uh, short time, and then go back in the world. So, uh, you know, and Rahul Tawajan uh, feels that he's called to marriage, so he, uh, you know, God willing, will be a parish priest in one of your parishes. So there's two paths. Uh, I took one path that God called me, and Rahul Tawajan took another. Uh, all of you, uh, all these Achen uh, Tawajan, and all of you have a call uh, tailored, made uh, by God for you. That is specific to you, that you know in your being this is what you're called to. Uh, you know, but right now we're called to, to have a good foundation on our Christian faith, and then from there, uh, you know, decide uh, whether to get married or not, and to work on our salvation uh, through family life or through the monastic life, uh, and, and, and serving the church in whatever uh, the ways that God has called us, okay? So uh, that's the conclusion of just sharing our stories. Uh, if you have any questions about our stories, and then now we're going to go into the presentation, uh, please write it on your note card. Uh, and then at the end of it, we'll uh, take the note cards. So uh, right now, you guys have seen this movie, right? What is the movie called? Yeah. Elf. And who is this? You guys know? Buddy. Yeah, OK. So you know, obviously, these kids, uh, these kids are uh, the, the, the actual elves. They're looking. The actual elves are looking. The, the actual owls are looking at uh, Will Ferrell and Buddy, and he's at, like, they're seeing, like, this guy is so tall, he's not elf size, he is, uh, he is not, uh, what, he doesn't look like us, he is some, something different. So they ask, what are you? So right now we're going to do a small activity, just, um, you know, a lot of people, especially your friends, like, they ask you, what are you, you know? Uh, especially if some people will have uh, like their read together as their official last name. You know, you've all had that where like your your teacher stutters and like, and then you're like, oh, that's me. Uh, but you know, for other other people, when they when people see you, like, what are you? Uh, and so th th that's what I'm gonna ask you. Just uh, go look to your neighbor and say, like, when people ask you, what are you? How do you explain who you are? Uh, whether uh, what does that mean? What's your religion? What's your race? What's your ethnicity? Like, what are you? Okay, so just take a, a minute or two, just uh, uh, looking beside your neighbor and just sharing uh, what you what do you tell your friends when they when you're trying to explain Syrian Orthodox Christian or Canaan or whatever. Okay, go ahead. And then after that, I'm gonna ask you what you uh, what what you guys said.
so if the, if the group are, uh, the, the group, uh, if you talk to each other about what people ask, what are you, and uh, explain what do you, uh, how do you explain what, who we, what you are, okay? So anyone, brave souls, want to just uh, share what they say or what they heard? Anyone? Go ahead. Andrew. Just the, yeah. say, like, uh, usually we end up saying we're Christians and then that goes into what we're God's Christians. Yeah. We usually never go past that. But it'd be that someone asks, we could always say like, something along the lines of we're a part of a small community of Indian Christians. It's called God. Okay. Yeah. That, that's a that's a that's a very good uh, you know that's a very good way to like you know just try to explain. Uh, very briefly, of course, you cannot say the whole history to someone. You know, they might fall asleep. But uh, uh, that's good. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else that's had something different? No. How about a girl? Can I get a, one girl, brave girl, to share? We had a guy already. Anyone? You go ahead. I said pretty much the same thing. Just like um, a certain domination of Christianity that's based in India, and then usually it doesn't. Um, really go beyond that. It's just like I'm, I am Christian. Sure. And it, uh, like an Indian. Sure. Okay. Thank you guys for sharing. Uh, I hope this. Uh this is a little uh, brain exercise. Uh, we're going to go into more of uh, what identity is, uh, what our identity is. I'm going to go briefly about it, nothing formal, uh, and then after that, we'll have a question and answer session, okay? All right, what is our identity? So first and foremost, our identity is Christian. Christ is everything. So our identity always is Christian first. Then, uh, then in, in, in Christianity, we are a part of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And our ancestors belong to the church of and the church in Antioch, and that uh, we call today is Syriac Orthodox, okay? Uh, so th these, this, these terms are relative to modern times. But uh, Christian, and we are a part of the church, the church. There's only one church, and we are a part of the church. But because of splits over time, you know, we had to identify as who, 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 what we are, okay? But, uh, you know, we are Christian for most, we are followers of, of Christ, and we are Syriac Orthodox. And then finally, ethnically, we are Kanani. So I'm going to go through briefly all three of these, and uh, please, if you have any questions, write it down in a note card, uh, and then we'll, a we'll answer them for today or tomorrow, based on this discussion or anything that you have in general, okay? All right. So our identity in Christ, the cross is everything. It is the beginning. Uh, it is the, the, the it is the it's the central thing of our faith. The central thing of the world. The the cross stands in the middle of the world of the universe. The cross is everything. So uh, in the Garden of Eden, there was two trees. What what were the two trees? Anyone know? Yeah. Yeah. One is the tree of life and. Yeah, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So which one did Adam and Eve, through free will, what did they choose? Which one? The tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? So the, they, they, they chose the tree of knowledge. And that was the one tree that uh, Christ, uh, that, uh, that God said, do not, do not uh, eat the fruit of that tree. Uh, but the, the, cro the tree of life was always the cross. So we always have to know that the, the tree, the tree of life was always the cross. So Christ was always the Savior. There was, there was never a time when Christ was not the Savior. So God's will was always this, that Christ, that God would come down to die for our sins, that God would, uh, that God would, recon would reconcile us with, with Himself, with God, and He would be the, 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 the mediator and the person who unites us uh, and who defeats sin and death. So this was, Christ is not the plan B. Christ is plan A. And so, of course, God, this is how God made us. God made us uh, human beings out of His creation. And He made us with free will. And so, of course, with free will, uh, God gave us that choice. But the, the choice, uh, the, 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 but God knew that Adam and Eve would sin. God always knew that Adam and Eve, he was not surprised, but he knew that Adam and Eve and the generation would be in this state. But God always had a plan that it was his son, Jesus Christ. So the cross, everything, and then from the cross, uh, we go backwards always. We always go backwards to the beginning of the world and through the prophets and all, everything was leading up to Jesus. 
that everything in the Old Testament was looking towards Christ and Messiah. And that in the New Testament, in the church, we always look about the cross, which is our salvation. Which everything, when we're in despair, when we're lonely, that in that powerlessness, Christ, in that in the death, Christ gave us life. So we look to the cross for everything. That's why we make the sign of the cross. That's why we wear crosses. That's why we are Christians. We are sealed with the cross and baptism and chrismation and, and everything that we do. Uh, and so our identity in Christ, and then in the salvific history, that you know the Annunciation was there, the birth of Christ was there, uh, the, the, the cru crucifixion, the resurrection, and finally, of course, the, the day of Pentecost where the church began. So Christ is everything, the cross is the, the center of everything in the, in the universe, and He is the one who saves us from sin and death, and brings us to eternal life, and, brings, says, and He is the one, this is the true human being. The true human being is one who is united with God and united with man. So all of us, we're not fully united with God and we're not fully united with man. But we are becoming a human being. We are becoming the, per the true human being who is Christ. Who is fully united with God and fully united with man. So this is who we're attaining to be in our Christian life. So this, this is our identity. Christ is our identity. And we are, uh, we are uh, sons and daughters of God. And we are brothers and sisters to Christ. We are, uh, we are followers of Christ. Christ is our Messiah. Christ is our Savior. And so we follow Him. Everything that we do, uh, we try in our Christian life. Although we're sinful, we, when we fall, we rise up again. We allow Christ. Uh, Christ is raising Adam and Eve. So every time we fall, Christ raises us from our sin. And we try to go towards the cross and towards the salvation, the resurrection. So, so, af so um, after the, the Pentecost, which is the, the birthday of the church, that the church went, the, Holy, the apostles got the Holy Spirit and they went to all around the world. So they, uh, they did this through, uh, through the apostles, the apostles and, the, and their disciples. They started doing kurban in different places and doing liturgical worship. Uh, uh, always the church is about liturgical worship. That the church is always doing kurbana, and through that kurbana, they are having the power from God to, to, uh, to preach, to teach, to baptize, to uh, give to the poor, to do uh, charity work, and bring souls uh, to the kingdom of God, to God, to Christ. So uh, when the apostles and their disciples uh, went, they were doing kurbana in different places, and they were building communities. Uh, and building Christian communities through this. And we see this in the Gospel of Luke in the road to Emmaus, that Christ, uh, that Christ was, uh, the, the Christ was, uh, he is, uh, and the two men who were on the road to Emmaus, uh, Luke and Cleopas, they were walking and they, uh, they were, after Jesus rose from the dead, they were asking, where, uh, did, uh, they were talking about all the events that happened that Jesus, this man and Jesus claimed that he was God, son of God, and he died. And uh, he, uh, the, his followers said he rose again and he was going to, uh, and his disciples are preaching that. And so when they're coming, they see Jesus, but Jesus rose from the dead, so they did not recognize him. So they were saying, uh, Jesus, uh, did, uh, did you not hear about this? And Jesus was saying, tell me about it. So uh, they talked about what all happened, the whole drama. And Jesus, so first what he did was he opened the scriptures. He showed them, he opened the scriptures and he showed them the Old Testament show, and then showed them that he was, he is in everything. He, he is in all the, all the prophets, the kings, all the ancestors, all the people of God were waiting for the Messiah. And so there, he showed, opening the scriptures and then he breaks the bread with them. He, uh, he breaks the bread and so through, after he breaks bread and they receive him, Christ disappears and he is in him, in them now. And then it's only then that he, they realize who, who they were talking to, it was Christ. So in the same way for us and as Christians, we live a life of repentance and communion, of repenting to God and, uh, and also uh, reading the scriptures, that's one part, and breaking and receiving kurbana. And this, these two parts are in the kurbana. The first part of kurbana is the Bible readings, and then the second part of kurbana is the breaking the bread and then receiving the kurbana, the bread, wine and blood, and then becoming one with Christ. And then we do that in our spiritual life, in the struggles, and we get power from God through this, by worshiping God. And this is how God wants to be worshipped. Uh, God wants to be known through the opening of the scriptures and the breaking of bread. So this Greek word, it means liturgizing. So the apostles were going around liturgizing, breaking, opening scriptures and breaking bread. So the apostles, they started going on to different places. So you see a map here. So uh, where did, where did uh, Christianity start? The holy city of? 
Jerusalem, right? So from Jerusalem, it spread throughout, all the apostles spread throughout uh, different places. So uh, we, we see that uh, you know, it went to Damascus, it went to Antioch, it went to Edessa, it went to, uh, and these are all uh, special to us, James the Apostle, uh, Saint Simon, Saint uh, Thaddeus, uh, Saint Peter of course, all these apostles went to the places that are important to us where our ancestors were. And of course, uh, different people, uh, Saint Paul went to Spain and all, all these, uh, these different regions. Uh, Saint uh, Matthew uh, went to Ethiopia, Saint Mark went to Egypt, uh, Saint Thomas went to India, uh, and we see all these different places they went to Greece, to, uh, to, to Europe, to the Middle East, to Asia, and even beyond. Uh, they went to China, to Afghanistan, and uh, all these different places the apostles went. So the church, when it grew, uh, they, they decided uh, to have five centers of the main, major cities, and so they made these uh, they made these uh, patriarchates uh, because uh, they wanted to. Uh, this this is the time when they got together in council of Nicaea, council of Ephesus. There were a lot of different uh, heresies going around. So they decided, okay, we have to come together. That's when they made the Nicene Creed. They're like, this is what the faith is. They made the Bible. They compiled the Bible of the Old, Old Testament and then also all the New Testament writings that were written uh, by the apostles uh, uh, and, and and the event and. and uh, and the, the gospel writers that they they uh, and Saint Paul they they compiled which ones are right which ones are not because there was a lot of writings that were not of the church that were heresy so they had this, the church is the one who decide who made the Bible and the church is the one who decide the, what's what is the Christian faith because it, it comes from Christ taught by the apostles and that the apostles and their uh, disciples were the ones who uh, were leading the church that it was through oral tradition and through written tradition in the scriptures. So, uh, so the church started in five patriarchates, Patriarchate of Rome, uh, Patriarchate of Constantinople, Patriarchate of Antioch, where our ancestors are from, Patriarchate of Jerusalem, which is very close tightly to Antioch, and Alexandria, which is all of, so this is Patriarchate of Alexandria, is all of Africa, uh, Patriarchate of Rome is all of uh, 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 Western Europe, uh, Patriarchate of Constantinople for Western Europe, Patriarchate of Antioch is Antioch in all the East, and then Jerusalem is the holy city. Uh, so all the apostles went to different places, and so our identity as Syrian Orthodox Christians. So Jerusalem to Antioch, uh, they went from Jerusalem uh, to Antioch. So Peter was the first apostle, and then from there, the, that's when uh, it, it went from uh, and, uh, from Jerusalem to Antioch, and then to Edessa. So Edessa is where our ancestors are from, the Canaanite people, that they where they were uh, right before they moved to uh, to, to to the Malabar coast to Kerala. Uh, so uh, this is so. I'll explain more about uh, what who these people are. But again, I'm just showing the where the Syrian Orthodox or where the Church of Antioch. That's where we're a part of the Church in Antioch. So it went to Antioch, then Edessa, Iraq, India, and the Far East. Antioch was Antioch in all the East. So uh, that's a, a part of the Church. The, the, there was only one church at that time, and our church, our ancestors were in Antioch, and they were in charge of all of the East. So even India, Iraq, Persia, uh, China, all these places, all of the East. Okay. So like I said, the councils happened, and then uh, there was a misunderstanding between the nature of Christ, whether Christ was uh, one nature or two natures, uh, whether he, he, they knew that he was one, uh, they knew that he was one person. But they didn't know how to explain this. So he was he was fully God and fully man. But it was there was a, a d debate amongst the fathers. But that's when the, the first split happened. The Oriental Orthodox Church, which is our the Patriarch Syriac Church, Coptic Church, Ethiopian Church, Armenian Church, all these churches uh, stayed in communion with one another. Versus the Eastern Orthodox Churches, which is all of the uh, you know Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, Serbian Orthodox, Bulgarian, Romanian, all these. Uh, uh, there they are uh, these, but they were in the other other parallel church. But these two churches actually have the same beliefs, and uh, these two churches are actually, uh, they're not in full communion yet, but uh, it's the same beliefs. Uh, and so uh, even now, uh, even this council that happened in 451 has been uh, referred by the fathers and trying to, uh, the fathers are trying to, the church hierarchy is trying to reconcile and say that we are talking about the same thing uh, and trying to get, go back to communion. And then obviously uh, the Roman Catholic Church uh, split in the 11th century, uh, and you, you guys know the history, I'm sure in schools you learn about that Roman Catholic Church started adding different stuff, theology, immaculate conception, uh, Pope, papal infallibility, different things 
the, uh, the celibate priests, so many different things that they added, and so the church split. Uh, and from after that, and the Protestant church split in the 16th century because the Protestants, uh, they re protested against the Roman Catholics for their additions, but then they subtracted too much. Uh, and so they, they don't have priesthood, they don't have uh, apostolic succession, they don't, they, they don't have the church, they only have the Bible, so they subtracted a lot of stuff. But in our church, the Orthodox church, both churches, uh, they, the, the church that was handed from the apostles, that was taught and preached, uh, uh, by their successors, um, and that was uh, that uh, that they were uh, that they preserved our the, the true faith that neither is added nor subtracted from the true faith. So this is what we believe. And the church, the Syriac Orthodox Church, uh, grew through two martyrs: red martyrs and white martyrs. Red martyrs are the martyrs who uh, who witnessed their Christian faith through dying. So they died for the Christian faith, and a lot of throughout the centuries there was a lot of persecution that happened, and uh, they died because of the, the pagans or the uh, other types or other groups of Christianity uh, her heretics. Or uh, they persecuted and even killed the true Christians for their beliefs in Christ, and so and the pagans too. And so they were uh, the church grew through the martyrs, through the blood of the martyrs, and when they were. When they died for their faith, a lot of people said, okay, if they're willing to die for their faith, there's something there. So the church grew a lot through the persecution throughout the centuries, not only in the early centuries, throughout the, the, the church. And then the white martyrs, the white martyrs are the ones who witnessed their Christ through their life, through their, uh, through their, uh, through their life, uh, through their faith and through their life and their actions. So the white martyrs is all the saints, the, our ancestors who, who, simple people who love God, who gave that to their children who bore witness to the truth the, the saving work, the saving uh, transformative life of Christ and, and, in, and, and his church. And through that, uh, the white martyrs were the people who bear, bore witness uh, through their life, through their faith. So through these, uh, through these, the church uh, grew and the church is still, that we still have that today and that's the spirit of the church. And the church in Antioch, other churches spoke different languages, uh, you know, and they spoke different languages. In, in Rome, they spoke what language? Latin, right? And in our church, they spoke uh, Syriac language, which is the dialect of Aramaic, which Christ spoke. So we also uh, have, uh, have a lot of uh, joy that we, our church still preserves that language uh, of the Syriac language. And even in, in India, the Syriac language is uh, still spoken today in, you know, in certain words that we say only in Syriac. And uh, and uh, and even in the in the old, it's not even 100 years ago that all our ancestors for 1900 years that uh, our ancestors were worshiping in Syria. And only uh, less than 100 years ago is when really uh, they started translating stuff in Malayalam, and uh, and and, they, and then they started worshiping in their language. And now we're praying in English. At least we're trying to in this country try to make it more normative in our parishes. So this is what the Syriac Orthodox Church is. This is the Church of Antioch, which we are part of. Um, and then you know, obviously we have a patriarch, we have clergy, uh, we have lay people, and this is the church. And we work with the other churches, uh, especially the Oriental Orthodox Church, which we're in communion with, the Eastern Orthodox Churches, which we're hopefully God willing, and the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestant Churches, that we hopefully that they will join the one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, and we will be one, uh, as Christ desires us to be one. So now, our identity as Kananaya. So, uh, as, as you know, uh, Kananaya, so this is just an icon of the, the creation of the world. So, uh, you have uh, the creation of the world here, the fall, uh, and uh, the hospitality of, uh, that Abraham was visited by, uh, was visited by three angels, and he was blessed by God, and he created, he, there was an eternal covenant between Abraham and all his descendants that God would said that he would bless. And they became the Hebrew people that moved to the Promised Land eventually. Uh, and, uh, and so their ancestors grew, and those are the Jewish people. Uh, and so our ancestors come from that. Our ancestors come from these Jewish people. So uh, uh, later in, 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 the, in, in the Jewish, uh, in, in, in the Hebrew people, they uh, divided into two groups. One is the 10 tribes of Israel, because Jake, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jacob had 12 sons. 10 of his sons, uh, they left 
and they married Gentiles and they became uh, the group, uh, the capital of Samaria and the chief tribe was Ephraim but they had 10, uh, ten tribes with them. And our ancestors are from here, the, 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 the southern kingdom of Israel uh, uh, which is called Judah, it consisted of two tribes which is Benjamin and Judah and our ancestors come from this region. Uh, uh, they come from uh, uh, the capital city was Jerusalem, and, and, then, uh, and these were people who were endogamous. So, uh, endogamy, you have heard, uh, endogamy was, uh, was something that God had asked the Jewish people to do to preserve uh, their faith through, uh, preserve their identity, and preserve their faith through uh, marrying only within each other. And so, I actually did a thesis uh, for my Master's of Divinity uh, on endogamy in the Old Testament. So if anyone wants it, I can send it to you. Uh, it's a long thesis, but I'm not. I can't have. I can't explain everything about endogamy. But endogamy was something that was blessed by God for the Jewish people, and that God, that that, uh, that God wanted for the Jewish people. And uh, and of course, there are several people, a lot of people that God, that most of the people they did endogamy, but some people did not. Like Moses. Uh, like uh, other people in the Old Testament, even in the genealogy of Christ, there are uh, Gentile women who are in the genealogy of Christ. So uh, God led led that way for other Christians uh, to to uh, to know that Christ is not only for the Jews, but He's for the Gentiles and the Jews. He's for everyone. He's for everyone. And so uh, even in, even in, in in the Old Testament, you see that endogamy was blessed for the Jewish people and God desired for that, but also He allowed some people to do uh, to, to marry outside so that they can uh, be joined in the, in the, in the, they can be believers of God. Uh, but also uh, people like Solomon, they married out of the community and because of that, He started worshiping the gods of His other, the, the pagan gods of His wives and so that led to a lot of strain. So this is a quick brief about the endogamy. Uh, so uh, during the, uh, there was two, uh, uh, the, the, the Jewish people were persecuted in two ways. The northern kingdom was, uh, was taken by the Assyrian people and they were held captive for many years. And then our people, the, the, the people in the southern kingdom, they were uh, exiled to Babylon. And that's where you see the book of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar, all these things you see in the Bible. So this is, like, when you read the Bible, it's our ancestors. So they were uh, exiled in Babylon, and then eventually the Persian, uh, uh, the Persian uh, uh, leader allowed he took over, he uh, triumphed over Babylon, and so he allowed the the, uh, the, the the Jewish people to go back to their homelands. And so some people uh, went, to, uh, some people did not, uh, some people settled in different areas, and some people went there, and that's where you see like Ezra and Nehemiah, they're trying to rebuild the temple. In the, book, in the Old Testament. So some people were in, they settled in different areas around here, and some Jewish people came here. But of course, the Jewish people during the main feast they would, they, they came back to Jerusalem for the big feast. So our ancestors they come from a place uh, which is uh, around here. It's called it's it's in the border of Syria and Turkey. It's called Shanli Urfa. You can Google this and find you can find this uh, city that's in the border of Syria and Turkey. And some people have actually uh, have gone to the city. Uh, so this is a place called Shani Urfa. Uh, and it's a place, it's called Edessa uh, or Uraha. And this is how it looks like in modern day. It was a place of both uh, Gentile people and Jewish people. And uh, during that time, uh, uh, during the ministry of Christ, uh, a king named Abgar was there. He was a Gentile uh, uh, king in that in that kingdom called Edessa or Uraha. And he uh, was sick, and so he heard that Jesus was uh, uh, that there was a guy named Jesus who was that he was a miracle worker. So he was sick, and he wanted to be healed. And he also said, "I heard you're being persecuted by the Romans. You can come to my kingdom." But Jesus said, well, "I have to be here." But he sent uh, his uh, uh, apostle Adan and he sent the other people with him to go and uh, this is the icon made with our hands so Christ put his uh, a cloth uh, on his face and then he gave it or some people say he gave it uh, and it had across the face of Christ that was not drawn uh, and when he had when he uh, when he put it when he was given uh, he was healed and so he became Christian he was the first Christian king so through his kingdom he uh, he made the whole great kingdom Christian 
both the, the Jewish people and uh, the Gentile people. Our ancestors, we believe, during the ministry of Christ, they were converted. Uh, they were a part of a group called Kananiah, which is the Zealots. And they uh, were uh, they were converted during the ministry of Christ. And Saint Simon the Zealot was one of the leaders at that time. So the disciples. He also was uh, led us our ancestors to go to become Christians from Jewish. So they were uh, they were living in Edessa. They were uh, they were uh, Jewish Christians as opposed to the Gentile Christians. So uh, as Jewish Christians, they still believed in their faith. Uh, they they steadfast to their faith and also in the Christian faith, but also they had remained some of their culture too. Because the Gentile Christians, they also uh, had their culture too, but they remained they, they were Christians. So there was a debate in, in the, the Book of Acts uh, where the Gentile people wanted to become Christians. So Jew, some Jewish people said, "You first have to become Jewish, get circumcised, and then become Christian." And then the apostles had a debate. Paul and Peter had a big argument. Uh, and St. James uh, eventually, he tried to, uh, he, through the Holy Spirit, they worked it out, saying that the Jewish people who are Christians, uh, they can remain as they are, uh, but, uh, and they can keep their traditions, but they have to get rid of some traditions like circumcision, uh, like animal sacrifices, they have to be Christian. But the cultural uh, traditions like marrying uh, within their community, uh, certain some of their cultural traditions that we do during our uh, Chandam Chartha Mailanji, those things you can keep and you can remain you can remain marrying within your own people, but you are a Christian. And the Gentile Christian, that they said you don't they don't have to become Jewish. They can become Christian from Gentiles and they can practice their own faith. Uh, they, they practice the Christian faith, but they also have their own traditions in there. They can marry themselves or they can marry whoever they want to, depending on what their customs are. So there are two different groups that came. Okay. So uh, in the fourth century, after St. Thomas uh, started the church. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Long Island crew, we need you. We're on stage in like 10 minutes. Where is my Long Island crew? They all left us. They left? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, no, sorry, no, no. sorry. So the, the, the Christian people, St. Thomas uh, converted a lot of the Hindu people and early Jewish settlers in Kerala. Uh, and he went to, to, to India and he converted a lot of people. And then eventually uh, the Jewish people, uh, the, the, the people became Christian. But then the church was dying out really. They needed more leadership. So uh, God gave a vision uh, to, the, to the bishop uh, uh, and through the blessing of the patriarch. Uh, 72 families were, uh, were uh, went from Uraha, these Jewish Christians, they went to uh, to Kerala uh, and to India really, to the Malabar coast, and they settled there to strengthen the church and also to uh, build the church in India. So this is what our ancestors did, 72 families we all know. They went in the 4th century, 345, uh, and this is uh, Peter Kostatios, uh, Bishop Joseph, Joseph of Uraha, and Kanaitoma was the merchant, and all the, the bishops and priests, uh, the lay people, 72 families, they went uh, from uh, from uh, Uraha to to to, uh, to India, and they they were separate from community. Uh, at that time, there was caste system in, in India. There still is caste system today. Uh, and that they, the, the when the the, when the the ruler of that time, he saw them and said, "Oh, this is great. We welcome you." Uh, and he said, "Okay, you are another caste." And so he made. So it's very easy to do endogamy in India. If there was any other place, it would have been very hard. But India was a very easy place to do endogamy because each caste only married with their caste. And so uh, they married. Uh, so they uh, they remained as a separate community, but also they were Christians. So they uh, helped the Christians uh, that were Hindu converts and the Jewish people were converts there, and they were, they helped the Christians and the Christian faith. And they brought the the, the, the they, they were sent from the Patriarch of uh, Antioch and the Catholics of the East, and they were they went to Kerala and they uh, they started the church there. Uh, our church, the Patriarch of Antioch there, and it grew and grew and grew. Uh, of course, there were waves of persecution and times. When the Portuguese came, they destroyed a lot of things, and then they tried to convert a lot of people to Catholic. That's when the Catholic Church started in the 16th century, in the 15th and 16th century, in Kerala. Uh, the, the, the Portuguese came to missionize the people because they said, what are you, the question that you asked. They, didn't, they thought we were so strange, and so they, they thought that they had to convert us. 
uh, to the true faith, which they thought was under the Pope. So many of the people uh, converted, which is Ghanaian Catholic and other Indian Catholics, and also our people, uh, and our people, the Ghanaian Orthodox, Syrian Orthodox, and also uh, the other Indian uh, Orthodox and, and Jacobite Christians, they remain under the Patriarch of Antioch. And then, uh, and so this is, and now we're here today as Canadian Syrian Orthodox people uh, that we are went from uh, from Kerala and now to America. So this is our identity. Um, this is our identity as so. Uh, going back to the beginning. Um, so our identity consists of three things that I talked about. One is Christian. First and foremost, second is Syrian Orthodox, Syriac Orthodox Christian, and thirdly, uh, ethnically uh, uh, being Kananaya. So I try to explain everything as quick as I can. Uh, so please, uh, we're gonna at this time we're gonna ask. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you can ask. Otherwise, we'll collect your cards. You can uh, collect it to the, the the middle rows, and then we'll try to answer some questions that you guys have. All right? Thank you so much. Just pass your cards forward. It. Or take it. Uh, during that time, if you'd like to say a few words. Give us some time. Yeah. And uh, the question is not only me. Uh, Thirumini is here and for any questions that you have. So, especially if you guys have questions regarding Dana or uh, or any of the presentation or anything, you can please ask, okay? The remaining questions that we're not able to finish today, we'll answer tomorrow. Any questions that anyone wants to ask right now? Hey, brave souls. So that is a lot of information, right? Yes. And um, for those who haven't heard it, this is uh, maybe a little overwhelming, right? Because three different topics. Uh, or you know, it's always remember our identity. Let me just speak in just about one minute why identity is important in other aspects of 